Chapter 15, Valencia. Squirrels are one of my favorite animals. I decide that's going to be my focus today as I cross the woods. I'm going to study the squirrels and feed Sacred, my pet dog. Okay, he's not really my pet dog, but he may as well be. I take care of him more than anyone else. I guarantee you that. He could be my pet if my parents weren't so anti-dog. They claim they aren't, but they refuse to let me bring Sacred home because they say pets are a big responsibility and they don't want to be the ones taking care of him. I tell them the whole point is that he would be my pet, which means I would take care of him, but they don't listen. They don't think I'm responsible enough to take care of a dog, but how would they know? We've never had one. I think they just don't want a dog in the house. If that's the case, they should just say so instead of blaming the whole thing on my perceived lack of responsibility. I don't get them sometimes. I really don't. So, because my parents think I don't know how to feed or walk a dog, Sacred is stuck out there in the woods fending for himself. I take good care of him. I bring him a bowl of food every time I go animal watching, and he always shows up. He's the sweetest dog. You wouldn't know it to look at him, not at first. He's a big dog, and he looks mean because he's kind of mangy. I mean, he lives by his wits in the woods, so he isn't exactly wagging his tail 24 hours a day. But all I had to do was look at his face, and I knew he was friendly. You know how I said meanness shows up in people's faces? It's the same for dogs, too. It's the same for all animals who have eyes, most of the time. Sacred is all black. For some reason, people are more afraid of black dogs than dogs of any other color. Now that I think about it, it's the same for cats, too. I don't know why. Dogs and cats can't exactly control the color of their fur, so why does it make a difference if they're born with black fur or brown fur? It's all hair. People are weird sometimes, I swear. I decide to head into the woods around 10.30. That will give me plenty of time to document squirrel activity in my log, feed sacred, and get to Kaori's house without rushing. But first, I need to swipe a bowl from the kitchen. Every now and then, my parents have styrofoam or plastic bowls on hand, but most of the time they don't. So I have to secretly take a real one. I always pick the ones my parents don't use so they won't notice. But lately, Mom's been going through the cabinets, and I think she suspects something. I can see her mind wondering, what happened to my bowls? Here's the thing. Every time I bring sacred food in the woods, I plan to return the bowl, wash it, and put it back in the cabinet. No one is the wiser, right? But every now and then, okay, most of the time, sacred brings the bowl to an undisclosed location never to be seen again. I know I need a better plan, but I always forget to come up with one, and I don't think about it until I'm about to feed sacred, like right now, for instance. I make a mental note. Figure out a more creative way to bring food. Maybe I could build a dog feeder and nail it to a tree, but there's no time for that now. I wait until my parents are in the den watching Saturday morning news, which is totally boring and has the worst closed captioning, by the way. I snatch one of the bowls in a big hurry. I fill it up with cornflakes, five slices of bologna, one slice of cheese, and a handful of baby carrots. I know it doesn't sound very appetizing. Trust me, it doesn't look appetizing either. But sacred isn't picky. When you're hungry, you're hungry. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make a simplest escape. My mother tugs my shirt before I can get out the door. Where are you going with that? She asks. Outside for breakfast? She looks inside the bowl and raises an eyebrow. That's what you're eating for breakfast? Uh, yes. Okay, I know I'm not very convincing, but if I tell her I'm going into the woods to feed a stray dog, she'll freak out. She tends to freak out over the dumbest things. Then I'm going exploring. I turn sideways so she can see the small bag over my shoulder, which carries my journal, a.k.a. my zoological diary, and favorite sketching pencil. She considers this, and I consider her. Did I catch her on a good day, or is she going to be a big pain? Be careful, she says, and be back by the afternoon. Don't wander too far, either. My mom is like a walking list of do's and don'ts. Got it, I say. I love you. Keep your phone on. There's always a footnote to her, I love yous. I love you. Be home by four. I love you. Be sure to answer my texts. I love you. Be careful. I wonder if she does it to my dad, too. 
Love you, Mom, and I will, I say as I walk out the door. I guess I use footnotes, too.